guys, it's Taz when I'm on Saga. Uh, we're back for another Airsoft gun review today. Two little things to mention first. It is Easter Sunday, so happy Easter to everyone who's celebrating around the world. However, there's been a very terrible um, series of terrorist attacks today in Sri Lanka, which has killed a lot of people, so um, my condolences to everyone who's affected by that. Yeah, it's not, not been the best start to the day, I suppose. Anyway, we're going to do a review today on my Action Army Company T10, which is the first sniper rifle I've ever bought. I've used it a few times now, and I feel that I can put it into words my experiences with it. Would I recommend it straight off the bat? Yes, I would. Another thing to say straight off the bat, it's 110% VSR compatible. I'm not even showing it to you. Here it is. Um, I know it's appeared in a couple of videos already. Obviously these accessories, bipod and scope, does not come with it. Right, so what actually is this? Well, Action Army was originally a company that made um, upgrades for the VSR-10 and various other guns, in fact. But they were, they were known for certain products, particularly their um, VSR-10 hop-up chamber, which is probably the best hop-up chamber for the VSR-10 series. Well, something they hadn't done until the point they made this is they hadn't actually made a full gun. They'd only made upgrade parts. They've actually got an L96 somewhat look-alike rifle that's come out since this and they've had different versions of this come out. I was using it as a base gun because I've basically built everything else, which is always the way you want to go for a sniper rifle. The actual stock is based on the J. Allen, uh, or is it J. E. Allen stock? It's basically a stock that a company in the United States makes for the Remington 700, which is basically what a VSR is. It's a copy of the Remington 700. There will be some problems if you're in the United States getting these. I th don't know if you can import them, but some people were complaining when they came out that they weren't sold in the States because it's a copyright issue with the company that makes the real stock. Um, same reason that there's certain guns with certain trademarks that can't be sold in America because the real companies get a whiffy about it. But if you're in Europe or anywhere else in the world, well, it's your lucky day, you can get a hold of one of these. Um, they are in continuous production, and you can find them on a lot of sites. But let's do a butt to muzzle. Um, we're going to cover what's on this gun, and then we'll go into some more detail. We have a polymer butt plate. It's not actually rubber, um, and it also is textured on the back, which is nice. I believe you can actually insert um, more of these. If you remove the two Allen bolts that are at the back there, you can actually increase the length of the stock which you can't do as is it's not an on-the-go thing you can't adjust it I find it actually fits me perfectly I don't have any gripes with the um, the length of pull this here I believe is for a QD sling which I don't have there are a number of these on various points all over the uh, stock you have an adjustable cheek piece it's slightly textured which is nice um, very solid none of them literally nothing on this wobbles um, none of this assembly wobbles you have this control here, which is essentially for adjusting your um, cheek piece up and down, which I won't play with too much because i got it just perfect. And you have a securing bolt here. Now, once you've adjusted it, you can tighten this up, and that will mean you can't move the adjustment wheel. It can travel anywhere from about down here to up there, so you've got a good inch and a bit travel. That's just so you can get your head in the natural resting position. So, ideally, you want to set it so... Um, if you're using either a lower face mesh or you're not, which I don't, um, as soon as you bring the rifle to your shoulder, your eyes should be perfectly in line with the scope, and you shouldn't have to move your head in any unnatural uh, direction or position to get a clear sight picture. The general receiver area, uh, there is a very good improvement on the T10 stock over the standard VSR 10 stock, and that improvement is this trigger guard. Not only is it a slightly cooler looking, in my opinion, um, it's actually attached to the stock. The advantage of that is it's two less screws that you actually have to uh, mess with. So I kind of like that they did that, that's very neat. This is the stock bolt handle, which is a very nice um, sort of improved shape, in my opinion. You can get a lot nicer grip on that. I do like that much more over the standard VSR handle or the G-Spec handle, whichever you're using. It's all a matter of preference. I wouldn't say one is dramatically different than the other. It's just what you prefer. This is the magazine release. Now, something's interesting about this gun. This is a unique feature that I don't recall seeing standard on any other gun straight out of the box. 
Because this is a VSR, everyone knows the VSR magazine is not in the realistic place, i.e. back here where the bolt would actually cycle rounds directly, and that would be realistic. However, you lose air volume if you on a gun that has a magazine back here, because that means the BBs are feeding up right there, which means you have a much smaller air volume in the cylinder, something the VSR doesn't suffer from because the magazine is further up. However, this is the best of both worlds, because it has a magazine in a realistic place, but it's not a real magazine. I personally use this to keep my little plastic wallet with my Allen keys for doing the hop-up and tightening or loosening anything I need. It's quite good for a storage compartment, you can have a cloth in there. And this will actually fit a magazine. Now, the real magazine, which is in the real, well, the standard VSR place further up, so you get a much bigger air volume will actually fit in this. I can't remember exactly which way it is. Ah, that way. And you can actually carry one in there if you wish. I'd just carry these in normal pouches, but it is sort of convenient um, little storage space. On top here, this is my optic. Again, I'll do a separate segment on that. I don't remember who actually makes it. I just know it's a Japanese scope. And it's a very nice scope. It's actually marketed for a 2.2 rifle, and it's probably a little bit overkill for an airsoft gun, but I just like big scopes, it's a weakness. It does make the gun somewhat heavier, but I'm used to carrying sort of heavy airsoft guns. My first ever gun was heavy, so to me it's just normality to have a gun that's heavy. But uh, for anyone who's sort of just starting out and isn't used to lugging weight around, that's probably a very oversized scope, and I probably wouldn't recommend it just for the weight. Um, if you don't care though, it's a nice scope. Now you've got a 20mm rail on top, which is standard, you know, for Picatinny, um, rail you can see there now these are all um these are i think they're nine millimeter raised i would actually go with these i recommend these it's good to have uh four in each because it gives you much more um sturdy fixture and you can have some of them become loose without actually affecting um how solid the scope is on there the ones i used to have were lower and they only had two bolts in each and they used to come loose you got these nice big bolts here which do have uh a slot in there you can tighten them up with an allen key once they get too tight to do by hand. One thing I definitely do recommend for this uh, rifle however is that you get um, some raised mounts. I find that they do help because you can get much better uh, sight picture of the scopes higher up especially with the way this cheek riser kind of operates. Um, if they're a bit too low down then even with the cheek piece on the lowest setting if you've got a big head you're going to have to turn your head somewhat unnaturally to look down the sight. I found that when I first got it so I immediately got some raised mounts. Right so further up the fore end on the stock you've got all of these um, sort of slots. Now what these are for is for mounting uh, rails. You can buy those rails that are made specifically for this stock. They are proprietary as far as I know. Action Army's catalogue will show you what fits and then you have to track them down but if you want to mount anything like a PEQ box or whatever I don't really think you need to do that on something like this. I mean you want it to just sort of well it's a sniper rifle you're crawling around with it. The more stuff you've got hanging off it just gonna make it somewhat heavier. Yeah, says a guy with a massive scope, but you know what I mean. It's going to make it heavier and um, it's going to be more things for foliage and branches to get caught on. So I just don't see the point. But whatever makes you happy, if you want to stick stuff on there, you can. It's on both sides and it's also on the bottom there if you want to fiddle with that. you got the QD mounts, mounting points for the sling if you want. On the underside... Uh, you've got the magwell, mag release is just that button there, and it's got two grooves for a thumb and forefinger. So your magazines go in like that. We'll take a better look at the magazines later, including how to actually uh, load them in. A bipod's not really something you need for an airsoft sniper rifle, I just like to have it. Um, main reason being, my sight is always muddy, all the time. So uh, it's just nice to have something to sit the gun down without laying the action in the dirt when you sat down. Or you are always got to try and find somewhere that isn't dirty to lay it. I don't like to get it too messy because this is a somewhat of an awkward gun to clean externally. Because you've got all these little dips and nooks and crannies everywhere. Although the barrel screwed in real good, it probably will affect the trajectory slightly if you're, you're resting the weight of the gun on this. Um, it could slightly move the barrel just enough that your shots are not shooting spot on. That's just speculation. This is not the stock barrel, this is in fact Action Army's fluted barrel. However, I do really recommend this, because it's a lot sleeker, 
than the stock barrel, but you'll see the stock barrel in a bit. If you unscrew that, it's got a 14mm adapter for the suppressor, which is nice because then you don't have to buy the adapter, which is only for the stock barrel. It'll also fit on the uh, standard VSR, of course. It's all a standard VSR upgrade part. The receiver is all standard as well. Right, so these are all these stock parts laid out. And I thought it'd be good to go over these because there are some countries where you can't really sort of upgrade your FPS. Or you you might be somebody who just likes to keep everything stock. It's important for a sniper rifle is you want to be able to outrange and outshoot an AG. So you can stay out of their range but you're still hitting them. That's the ideal scenario you want. And that's why it's definitely worth putting in the somewhat cringy amount of money to build a good sniper rifle but you will get results I absolutely guarantee if you put money into a sniper rifle especially a VSR because it's the most upgradable platform out there this is the stock spring guide as you can see it is made of plastic the only thing there is to say about this is chuck it you don't want to use a plastic spring guide this will probably be fine for the stock spring this spring is only about 280 FPS on a 0.2 on the Chrono. It's about the same as a stock VSR 10 by Tokyo Marui when you get it. Um, don't recommend you keep either of these. Uh, the first thing you want to upgrade when you upgrade your spring is definitely this if it's plastic. You don't want to keep a plastic spring guide. I've replaced this with the Action Army um, reinforced stainless steel spring guide. So you definitely want to upgrade that to a steel one. This is the piston. This is also plastic although Saying that, neither of these parts I'm mentioning that are plastic, it's not that they're bad plastic, it's just they're not going to withstand a lot of abuse from like shooting 500 FPS or higher for long periods. They're simply not going to stand up to it. Uh, reason being because this surface here is what the sear holds onto, like this. And over time, you're pulling the trigger enough. This, this is going to eventually wear this surface out because it is only plastic. Um, it's sort of more of a dense, high density polymer. This also doesn't come with POM rings, which isn't a huge handicap. Although if there is anything nice about this, is the fact that it comes with a ni it's 90 degree sear compatible out of the box. Um, it's not 45 degree. I replaced this with the Action Army um, blue piston which I believe is a mix of aluminium, aluminium stainless steel and it also comes with two POM glide rings which keep the piston centered like that whereas this can actually move around just ever so slightly it's not really a huge problem but you can hear there it's moving because it's not perfectly centered so if you get the one with the POM rings um, it's much better. The Action Army Blue Piston will actually come in the pack when you buy the Action Army Specialized Trigger Pack, which is what I've got. Um, so that will come with it, the upgraded one. If you're only shooting, uh, if you're keeping it stock, then this part is actually fine. You could probably just keep that. This is actually very consistent at the box. Although it's low FPS, it does shoot very consistently. Mine was about 5 FPS variant. So if you're keeping it stock, then this thing's actually fine. You could probably just stay with that. Just go to the cylinder head quickly. Oh, this isn't actually too bad. You could you could stay with that to be honest. Um, although if you're going to go and upgrade the cylinder, you'll probably from Action Army. You're going to get one of these anyway that comes with it. But it's not too bad. Um, it's actually quite well well polished. Although there's definitely better things out that you could get. The stock cylinder is actually fine. Um, you could keep that to be honest. Um, there's nothing on it that I consider to be sort of prone to breakage although if you want to upgrade like completely upgrade I would still replace it with the Teflon cylinder because it you can feel the difference when you cock the Teflon cylinder compared to this the Teflon is a lot smoother this is the stock trigger group or trigger pack whatever you want to call it this is actually the stock piece I was most impressed with this seems to be a lot better than the Tokyo Marui VSR kind of stock trigger pack you get Mainly for the reason it's 90 degrees sear, as previously mentioned, out of the box, which I believe the TMVSR isn't. The nice thing about this is Action Army states that this is perfectly fine to use with any spring up to an M130, which is actually what I use in my gun, but it shoots just under 500 FPS because I have a number of other parts in it which put the FPS up. Always remember, guys, the spring alone does not determine the FPS of the gun. 
when they state what the FPS is, that's kind of just tested stock when the rest of the gun stock, as far as I know. When you change other parts like barrels, hot rubbers, especially hot chambers and that, and the air seal changes, um, that's going to affect your FPS. One thing that is nice over the what I upgraded it with is this actually has a you know safety, as is normal. Um, it just simply blocks the trigger seal right there. Then you move it, and you can pull the trigger. Here's the sear up top, which is quite nice. Um, the trigger pull on the stock piece isn't too bad, and you can actually adjust it. There's an arrow there where it says trigger pull. I think you can stick an Allen key and you can adjust the length of travel. The trigger pull isn't actually bad on this. You could keep this, I actually use this for a while if you want. Um, anything up to an M130, of course, it's they state that this will withstand it, and to be honest, I think it probably would. It doesn't actually feel all that cheap. There's definitely better packs out there. It's probably one of the the least worst ones you could have. I'll just say that. Um, it's not too bad at all. So, tops to Action Army for actually putting a decent stock trigger pack in something. Alright, next, this is the stock outer barrel. One thing I actually knew I didn't like, even from the photos of this before I bought it on Airsoft World, I looked at this barrel and I thought, well, that's got to change. I'm going straight with the fluted barrel. <laughs> but this does have a threaded uh, cap on the end comes off. Now your actual adapter isn't going to go in this part, it's actually going to go in there. Um, so you don't actually have to unscrew this. I'm not sure why you can actually even take this off. As far as I know there's uh, there aren't adapters that are actually that large. And these standard Action Army 14mm, I think it's a 22 to the 14mm conversion, will actually fit in there just fine anyway. Although I've replaced it with the Action Army fluted barrel, as I showed earlier, which already has a 14mm thread on the end. You don't have to buy an adapter. So if, you go, if you're going with the fluted barrel and you want to use a suppressor, because the gun wasn't long enough for you and you want to make it even longer, if that's what floats your boat, you don't have to buy the adapter, although with the stock barrel you do. I personally think this barrel's pretty damn ugly. Like I said, I knew I was going to replace that straight away. This is the stock inner barrel and the stock hop-up. Now how this actually compares to a stock TMV SR10 hop-up, or just a VSR10 hop-up, I couldn't tell you. It has the same kind of hop adjustment as in you have this lever. This part is normally external, it comes out of a slot on the stock. You can adjust your hop in little clicks like that. Now this, is, uh, this isn't too bad, although there are some issues which have been you know, mentioned from forums for years about the uh, the way the arm works on the VSR. That's why most people tend to upgrade with the same upgrade I've put in, which is the um, Action Army VSR hop-up chamber. That uses an Allen key to adjust instead of this system, which is a pain in the arse in a way, because every time you want to adjust it, you've got to take the mag out, adjust it, put the mag back in, chamber a BB, try it again, blah, blah, blah. But once you get it set, it stays where it is. Now... This isn't loose by any means, so it's not that it being loose is a problem. It's just the fact that this arm, as you can see, it's not perfectly shimmed. So you can get a problem with the VSR if you're using a stock chamber where the, the arm can tilt. There's something called a top-down center mod that you can use to fix that. Something which I haven't needed to do, so I can't tell you exactly what that is or how to do it. It just solves that problem. But the way it works is you have... That's the side of your buck in there. The buckings, of course in the back there and when you pull this lever you will see that this is camming the hop-up arm downwards like that that's on max that's on minimum so if you pull it towards you when you're aiming the rifle that increases your hop the other way is to decrease it stock in a barrel on this isn't uh, it's not bad but it's not brilliant either um, even if you're staying with action army parts I would go with the Action Army 6.01 because my sniper buddy I play with now and then he went with the Action Army 601 and it, it, it's very good actually um, I don't know how much of the performance is attributed to that barrel compared to the other parts he has on it but it's definitely not a bad barrel because that rifle was shooting dead straight I personally didn't go with an Action Army in a barrel I went with a Maple Leaf Crazy Jet which is a dual bore it's a 6.01 to a 6.04 at the muzzle and I can say it works very well. I, can't, I don't have any complaints about the um, Crazy Jet barrel because I use one in my gas blowback pistol, my Tokyo Mirai 6 Sour 226. Um, it's very good in both guns. 
I can't really tell you how much better it is than this because I've not used this barrel with all the other upgraded parts. I mean, I, I only fired its stock. From what I've seen, some people who are proper experts on these are actually saying that these inner barrels are not... They're not amazing, but they're not terrible, but it's still worth upgrading. Um, it's always better to upgrade your inner barrel to a, a much higher end one because if you have a better in, internal surface finish that's properly... Um, you know, smoothly done, highly polished and properly lapped, etc. It's going to give you a much uh, more consistent shooting rifle. I definitely recommend the upgrade parts that I mentioned, though. Um, they have definitely improved the shootability of the rifle. The only thing I don't like about the um, stock... Sorry, not the stock, the Action Army Specialized Trigger Group, which I can show you here. This safety lever, which of course exists on the stock trigger pack, is absent. You don't have one, so you've just got to be very careful. Um, just make sure you don't uh, sweep anybody with the muzzle when you're playing, um, because this thing has a very light trigger pull. It's still worth getting because it's got much stronger construction, much better sears, which are also 90 degree, of course. You can also upgrade stuff like bolt caps and uh, everything if you want. But the nice thing about the VSR series is you can replace practically every single little part. I mean, there are companies out there which make even the smallest pieces of upgrade parts, um, a lot of which are a premium price. You can get a good shooting rifle without spending loads of money, though. You could just got to know where to get it and what bits to get. Right, I said we'd have a little look at the um, scope I put on this. This is a very nice scope, actually. Um, I can't remember who makes it. This little marking on here doesn't tend to actually reveal any results when I type it in on Google, so I don't know if that's actually the OEM or if it's a rebrand or whatever. However, this is essentially the same scope as the Novrich scope. Um, he basically gets these and sticks his own name on the side and then sells it for a higher price, so that's what that basically is. I got this on Amazon. It does have external turrets and it's got an illuminated uh, reticule. And it doesn't have any turret cabs, which is nice because you can just adjust it on the go. You got, um, I think it's up to five different settings for red, green, and blue. It uses a battery, which is installed in the side there. The clicks are, it's a quarter of MOA. So basically, if you were aiming at something at 100 yards, and you click it four times, that's going to adjust the point of impact one inch. Uh, one minute of angle is one inch at 100 yards, just for those that aren't aware. And you've got the windage on the side there. And those are all the controls, They're pretty basic um, in terms of your zeroing. Now you've got magnification here, this particular one's three to nine. Now for airsoft, I pretty much just use it on three. You don't need to use loads of magnification. It's much better to have a wider field of view than it is to be completely zoomed in on something. You've got a focus at the back, which currently is covered by the scope cap, but the scope cap is a happy surprise. I personally don't recommend that you keep scope caps on during gameplay. It's just another thing to get knocked off. I mean, I've knocked it off, but luckily I noticed, so i just get rid of that. You've got a focus there, which has quite a wide variance of uh, focusability. Another scope cap at the front. Now these did come with it, so did this uh, sunshade, which is part of the reason this is a whacking great scope. And up here you have your parallax settings. This is anywhere from 30 yards to infinite. I tend to keep it on 50, and I don't know how much effect that really is going to have at airsoft distances. I don't feel that I've needed to adjust it at all, but I just keep it on a midway point. Up the front, you can remove this ring. Not sure why, because you're not going to screw something else onto there, other than a mesh cover, which I'd probably put further back anyway. Um, if you've got a mesh protector, then having the sunshade isn't kind of so relevant. I don't. I haven't gone for a mesh protector though, because the the threads on these people have said are a bit of a funny size. It says it's 50 millimeter, but I've seen reviews saying people have bought a 50mm uh, corresponding mesh protector and it hasn't actually fit. But what I've done is I've actually cut a lens protector from a piece of Lexan plastic glass. Now Lexan's very cheap, you can actually get a whole sheet of it on eBay for literally a couple of quid. And all you have to do is cut a circle out of it with a Dremel, slightly oversized, then file it to shape, and it will withstand well, I've tested some. I shot it with this on point fours at point blank, and it didn't do anything. Didn't even leave a mark. So it it will withstand a BB, 
at any legal velocity at least. I really recommend Lex and Glass. I see people with these kind of flip up lens protectors which are £15 a pop that they often have protecting holographic sights and red dots. Silly stuff really because they can't take as much abuse and they cost more money. Just get some Lex and Glass and make your own. So that's my optic. I don't know if you'll be able to get a uh, view with the um There you go, it's just sort of your mill dot. Um, trying to see it from the side is a little difficult, but it's your standard kind of mill dot scenario going on there. I don't like these scopes that have kind of the ballistic drop compensator lines like that. Never been a fan of that. That's what my old Tasco has, and I never liked it because for me it just obstructs more of the view. But it's a nice optic if you don't mind having a, a big beefy scope that adds a bit of weight to the gun. I personally prefer my guns to be a bit heavier and sturdier feeling rather than something really lightweight that I don't have a lot of confidence in. That's just my preference. As previously mentioned, this is a new Pole Harris bipod um, with adjustable feet. Just hold those in, you can move them to any uh, position you like. Sprung loaded like that, so it's easy to um, deploy. Pretty standard bipod that you can get pretty much everywhere. This one, the new Pro, I do recommend because it's, it's nicely made, it's got a nice uh, weather resistant finish on it. Nice good quality springs and feet. Yeah, does the job, nothing wrong with it. I have to say, for the first um, sniper rifle I bought, I'm definitely very happy I went with it, just for the feeling alone. The whole feeling of the stock is extremely sturdy. I forgot to actually mention earlier, there's a little uh, sort of groove here. I can't really see on the camera that's coming out. You can hold it. A bit like the stock on an LMG to keep it in your shoulder during recoil, but you can hold it to sort of keep it stable if you keep your elbow forward, which is excellent from the bipod. I have actually used the bipod a lot during shooting. I'm just looking at a certain target and I'm not too worried about everything else around me because I know this guy's protecting my flanks. It's perfectly good then because you can just keep it straight on target. And this action, I actually love it. It's so easy to do. And I'll just show you like how you can see how smooth it is. It's already cocked, so there's no spring tension. But very positive. Make sure you keep it lubed up, though. The trigger pull itself is very, very crisp, like that. Um, the first time I ever tried it, I didn't even realise it was about to. I put my finger on the trigger to pull it, and boom, it went off. So it's very sensitive. Like I say, there's no safety. So make sure you're careful. So the magazine, you can slot that in quite easily when you're laying down without even moving the rifle and then go through the motions. But yeah, the actual handle of the gun is very nice. Like I say, when you add a lot of stuff on it, it does become a little weighty. I often find that when I'm laying prone for long periods, I do switch to using the bipod because trying to keep this up for long periods like that does get a wee bit tiring because this scope is pretty heavy. Also, you want to try and remain as low to the ground as you can without sort of busting your neck because you're looking up. So just get it at a nice medium height. I wouldn't normally recommend using a bipod, as said. Um, it's better to have your gun lighter. I just personally prefer to have one. But the actual action of this um, is excellent. I think what I'll do now is I'll show you how to load the magazine and then I'll talk a bit about the BBs I've been using because I've got a lot of good things to say about those. So the magazines themselves I find to be very good quality. Um, there's two good points over these that I think makes them better than the standard VSR mag. Main thing is it's transparent. Um, sorry, zoom that out. The main thing is it's transparent um, and it's 50 rounds so it loads like so and it compresses the spring to about there. So when you've got about maybe 30, 20, 30 something rounds left, you'll be able to see the spring emerge from this corner. So when you're about to run out, you can see how many BBs you've got when it's only the last few without removing it from the gun because that you can see from the bottom. You can just flip the gun upside down and see how much you've got. You don't have to take it out and try and, uh, or just change your mag when you're going into something that you know is going to get busy. You can actually just look. I've got two of them. And I found that's more than enough for how much I shoot. These are, of course, compatible with the standard VSR because they're also a um, standard VSR upgrade. They're not exclusively for the T10. Right, uh, it's got a follower up there, which you can click in if you've got somewhat of a finger now, which makes loading a little easier. Now, to load these, you will need a standard speed loader. Just a little awkward because I'm trying to do this around the tripod. 
but just hold it straight like that and your rounds will start to go in and you can see they're going to come out down there and up around so that's about 50 rounds um, to release these if you just stick them over your bag or whatever and just push in on that they'll shoot out now the BBs I use I really recommend these these are Longbow .4 BBs they're in the UK these are very very nice quality and a lot of people recommended these um, people said to go with these and I did and I don't regret it I've tried some .4 Jeffs and I found these seem to shoot slightly better um, in terms of they were more consistent but they're a thousand um, thousand a tub quite expensive but you get what you pay for um, yeah I definitely recommend these they make them in all sorts of weights if your rifle can lift like a 0.48 or whatever and it's not affecting the performance then I'd just say go as heavy as you can I might actually get some slightly heavier ones like four fives or four threes and see how they do um, but I've got the hot perfectly set for a 0.4 Right, something I think has completely done wonders for this gun, and probably my favourite single upgrade in it, is the whole uh, hop chamber and bucking and barrel assembly I've thrown in it. The stuff in the back is more for durability and consistency. You can see there, that's the cylinder head, which obviously is moving back when I retract the bolt. Now what you need to do is retract the bolt, and you will see there's a tiny circle there behind the hole where the BBs go in. That is where you stick your Allen key. It's quite a small Allen key, but you basically, you know, you're, you're, you're cycling the rifle after you've done it and firing it. And the best thing to do actually is don't look down the sight, put your head off to the side. And you always want to zero your scope to your trajectory, not your trajectory to your scope. That's the wrong way to do it, all right? Because you want your trajectory to be kind of like this. And it goes up and then drops. You don't want it to be completely up and you don't want it to be straight and just fall down. Now the good thing about that chamber is, especially when you use it with a maple leaf bucking, which I think are absolutely fantastic, you're going to get very consistent good shots. I use a maple leaf, it's a 60 degree deception, yeah, I know it's a 60 degree. I'm not sure what the stock rubber is, it does feel like a 70 degree. I use a 60, because it has a little bit more grip where it's a softer rubber, and it actually doesn't work too bad in the cold either, although I have noticed with this setup, um, when it's slightly warmer it does tend to shoot better. I'm sure that's um, pretty standard across the board just because of the way that um, rubber behaves in cold weather and stuff like that it tends to go a little stiffer. But that hop setup I absolutely love it. Um, actually whilst we're sat here and give you a more close up on the trigger pull so it's cocked at the moment. You can see there it's very straight and you do get a tiny little jolt from the forward movement of the piston when you fire. You can definitely, you definitely know it's gone off anyway, put it that way. So I've really enjoyed this rifle so far. I, I do, I do um, recommend it mainly just for the upgradability. And the fact you have a stock which is completely different from your standard VSR stock. Far more interesting looking. I mean, how cool does that look, to be honest? I think that looks pretty sweet. My buddy actually has one of these too. He actually uses it without the mag. And he's took the mag release off as well, so it's a bit more streamlined. I believe now they also do make a five round magazine, which is a well, five round magazine, which is also a little bit shorter about there. This is more sort of simulating a 10 round double stack, I'd imagine. Right, so what are my final thoughts on the T10? Go for it. <laughs> if you don't mind a gun that's a little bit heavier. Um, I know I keep saying that, it's mostly the scope um, that I've got on mine, but it is a little bit heavier than a... TM VSR 10 even when it's got no attachments on it. Um, I did feel a slight increase in weight. It's, it's actually no big deal to me, but for some people that just like featherweight guns, and I don't recommend it if you like a featherweight gun, because once you've decked it out with um, parts and that, um, you're going to start to feel the weight. For me, it is, uh, it's actually heavier than my AK. Um, I can feel the difference. Although I have to say it's a little bit wet, um, better balanced, but the main attraction for me is the fact it was it's a hundred percent VSR compatible, and I just think it looks amazing. That's coming from a guy that isn't even into kind of modern looking guns. I mean, I did debate on getting a uh, VSR with like a wooden stock, but I went for this in the end just because there's more there's just more stuff you can throw in it, I suppose. And I thought I'd uh, just go modern just for once, and I actually really like this stock. It, I'm not easily impressed by kind of modern stocks. Um, like I say, I'm much more into your traditional stuff. I really love the look of this, and that was a big selling point to me. You got all that great up, upgradability, and you got all those great looks as well. 
and I really do enjoy using it. It's a very nice shooter once you've got it all built up and everything. So, yeah, if you're willing to put the money into it and absolutely do, this is going to be a fine piece of kit and it's going to serve you for many, many, many years without any problems. Um, you'll be able to shoot tons and tons of rounds out of this before anything starts to wear out because Action Army's upgrades are all very nice stuff. Mind you, anything really, you know, PDI and Edgy, all those parts are great as well. Um, but you can get a perfectly good shooting gun out of Action Army bits. Um, I've had no problems with this, I absolutely love it. The only thing I might try is, as I aforementioned, some slightly heavier BBs. I'll see if that slightly improves the performance. It's just There's just something so satisfying about airsoft sniping. Um, I can see why people do it. I don't recommend this to someone who's brand new to the sport. Absolutely not. Um, the only reason I'm actually any good with this is I already have quite a lot of prior experience, you know, sneaking around shooting. And generally speaking, I always actually played like a sniper, even when I had an AEG. I often used to like sneaking off on my own or just with a couple of people and waiting for a good opportunity to let rip on somebody. But now I've got something that can do it three times the distance. I can get uh, 80 metre, 90 metre shots of this quite easily. I have measured it because the range has got um, range markers. This will hit the 90 metre target over half the time, um, as long as there's not too much wind. So I don't have problems with that. Good hit to also targets piecemeal with it. But yeah, that's been my review. I hope that's been helpful to people. If anyone's got any questions, then um, please feel free to post in the comments. Feel free to rate, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys.